Hey, joining me to discuss is Stephen Kinnock, who's a Labour MP and member of the Brexit Select Committee. Uh, Stephen, you're very welcome to the programme. Will you be voting in favour of again or against the withdrawal agreement? No, I'll be voting against Theresa May's deal today. The fundamental weakness at the heart of her deal is the political declaration on the future relationship, which is just incredibly vague and open-ended. And I don't think it's right for us to sign off on £39 billion worth of British taxpayers' money for what is effectively a leap of faith. Uh, she's, she's just trying to kick the can down the road uh, so she can get through uh, this with the withdrawal agreement but not have any clarity about the future relationship and that's not acceptable. So that's why I'll be voting against So y- you don't have a problem with the withdrawal agreement itself, it's rather the political declaration? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I think there is, of course, some serious challenges in the withdrawal agreement and the backstop has been very controversial. But if... You have to ask me, you know, what what is my biggest problem with this? It's the lack of clarity on the political declaration. And what I'm part of a group called the Norway Plus Group of MPs, which has been gaining a lot of support across uh, all sides of the House uh, lately. And our proposal is that we should, uh, when we leave the European Union, join the European Economic Area alongside countries like Norway, who are part of the single market, have a customs union deal, and deliver, I think, on the narrow vote to leave, which, in my view, is a vote to move house but stay in the same neighbourhood. They have a customs deal, but there's still customs checks because, uh, well, there's no customs, that, that there's, the customs deal doesn't extend to certain products, but then products that Norway imports from other countries, they can set their own tariffs with that. So when you go to Norway and the border between Norway and Sweden, there are still customs checks there. Which would necessitate on that model a customs check between the north and the south in Ireland, which, again, you're back to the backstop problem. It's not acceptable, absolutely. So our model is Norway plus. And what that means is the Norway bit is basically single market, European economic area. You're absolutely right that Norway is not in a customs union uh, with the European Union. We are proposing that we add a customs union uh, into this deal uh, which would then enable totally fr- fr- frictionless and seamless trade uh, with uh, the European Union and indeed across the border in Ireland. So, you know, that that is the, the plus bit of Norway plus is that we're saying that it needs to be a combination of single market and customs union. Uh, critics uh, of that model will say, hold on, this is kind of the, the worst of both worlds in a way, in the sense that we're, we're, you're effectively still members of the European Union to a, to a large extent. Norway contributes to the European Union budget, but they've no say on how that's spent. In fact, Norway spend an awful lot of their time at diplomatic levels lobbying the Swedes and others to make their case for them, that you'd be doing that here. You'd be sending uh, MPs over to Dublin and elsewhere to say, look, we don't really like how this is, this is going, but billions of our money is going to Europe every year. Can you, can you maybe make our argument for us? I think two things there. One is that you know, on the doorstep, a lot of people will say to you here in, in, the, in, the, in the UK, uh, we joined the European you know, common market back in the 1970s. And, and somewhere along the line, Europe became something that we didn't vote for. Uh, we, we don't really want to be part of that deeper political integration. We want to have, though, a very strong market relationship. So we're, we're essentially doing a sort of common market 2.0 here, a common market for the 21st century. And I think it opens up the door to the European Union to actually reinvent the way it works, to have a more decentralized model where you have an outer ring of countries that have a strong market-based relationship but that are not part of the deeper political project. What I would also say is that the EEA countries do have a statutory right to be consulted in the shaping of all EU legislation. You have the EEA Joint Committee, the EFTA Surveillance Authority, they have their own court, the EFTA Court. So it is Brexit. You're, te- you're stepping out, but you're basically leaving the EU without wrecking the British economy and out without wrecking our union and, and causing serious uh, questions to be asked about the, the Good Friday Agreement. We have yeah, a solemn yeah. commitment to protect that. Yeah, you'll, so, you'll still you know, be contributing it's, it's to the. Compromise. You'll it's still be contributing to the European budget. You will still uh, be subject, if you're a member of the single market, to the four freedoms, which includes free movement of labour, and you will, I suppose, technically be free to strike trade deals around the world. Though why anyone would want to strike a trade deal with the UK as opposed to with the EU when customs and goods will just flow freely over and across uh, back across the border, kind of beggars belief. So on the budget, it would end up being about half of what we pay now per capita, uh, based on the way that Norway's contribution is calculated. So it's substantially less. But you know, show me a club anywhere in the world where you don't have to pay a membership fee. 
uh, the membership changes, we become less part of the deeper political integration. We therefore pay less. In terms of trade with other countries, you're right. The, the, the plus bit, the customs union bit, means that we, we wouldn't be able to strike independent trade deals. I actually think that's been a massively exaggerated benefit. Let's face okay. it, the EU has 55 trade deals with all sorts of huge economies around the world. Why wouldn't we want to be a part of that? Mm. So, you know, it's a compromise. 5248, in my view, is a mandate to move house but stay in the same neighbourhood. This respects the mandate, uh, delivers Brexit, but does so without wrecking uh, the jobs and the livelihoods of the people that we were elected to represent. Uh, w- one of the issues, I suppose, for Theresa May uh, is that, well, there's no consensus, there's no, doesn't seem to be a majority agreement, certainly for her withdrawal agreement. There doesn't seem to be a majority agreement, though, on anything. What are the numbers like uh, behind this Norway, uh, Norway Plus or Common Market 2.0, however you want to call it? Yeah, of course, the answer to that question depends very much on whether we're whipped. I think if, if Labour were whipped uh, for this, we've got 257 MPs at the moment. I think we'd have at least 200 voting for it if we were whipped, and uh, the same on the Tory side. So if, if both leaders were to whip for this, we have a majority. Uh, the big question is, will they do it? Will Theresa May show the leadership now? She's going to lose this vote this evening. She should go straight onto the, the steps of Downing Street and say, this is a model that I believe can command a majority and, importantly, is very easily agreed with the European Union. Michel Barnier has said from the start that the Norway option uh, was on the table. The only reason it got removed from the table was because of the British government's red lines. So, you know, this this is a plug-and-play option. It's off the shelf. It can be done very quickly and easily. The question now is, will our political leaders uh, actually step up and, and see this as the way forward? All right, Stephen Kinnock, Labour MP, a member of the Brexit Select Committee. Stephen, thanks a million for speaking to us. Okay.